Good morning, this is Dr. Norma Thomas and welcome to week one of Social Work 636. What I plan to do with this overview video is to go over the readings for this week, go over to PowerPoints that have been provided by faculty at Widener University, add a very short PowerPoint of my own, and so that is, oh, and also to talk about the syllabus for the class. So let's begin by talking about the syllabus. So up on the screen, now I have the syllabus for Social Work 636, Organization and Program Development. I describe the overview of this class in my welcome video the competencies and dimensions you can read for yourself that this course is to accomplish. The course objectives are to understand and articulate the ethical issues that arise in working with human service organizations, to understand and articulate beginning skills in organizational assessment, practice, and program management, to understand and articulate beginning skills in program development, to understand and articulate beginning skills in program evaluation, appropriately use the professional empirical and theoretical literature related to social work practice with individuals, families, and small groups, to assist in writing a program proposal, to understand the relationship between the actions of the social service agency and the continuation of and or the remediation of oppression and discrimination. And finally, to demonstrate the ability to write a grant proposal, which is the major written project for this class. The text are the current APA manual, the Brody and Nair text, titled Effectively Managing and Leading Human Service Organizations, and the Kettner, Maroney, and Martin text, Designing and Managing Programs, an Effectiveness-Based Approach. So the course requirements are set in the syllabus. Read those on your own. Policies in terms of academic integrity and online attendance and submission of assignments. They should all be done on time. The outline of professional behavior for an online course is here, and the um, discussion in terms of if you have questions, please ask them. And if you have been provided a learning accommodation, please make sure I get that information as soon as possible. As you can see from the syllabus and as the case with online classes in generally, general, overwhelmingly the grade is based on class participation, which means completing the discussion post responding appropriately to a, a post of one of the class members and getting those in on time and also including references to support your statements. The other big assignments have to do with writing a grant proposal and there are components of that. The first is organizational capacity assessment the second is the statement of need and program goals and objectives. And the last is that cumulative grant proposal. APA style is what we use in writing papers. And so again, if you're not familiar with APA, make sure you either have the APA manual or go to one of the online resources to uh, get that information so that you're writing in APA style. That is very important because this is an academic program which requires academic writing. So again, class participation, all that information in the rubric is here. I'm going through it fast. The organizational capacity assessment is outlined here. 
and is also outlined online in the course so that you can follow along with what is required for each section of that paper, but we will be going through it each week. And there is a rubric attached there, the statement of program goals and objectives, and then finally that cumulative proposal. Sometimes proposals can be intimidating, but it's a necessary part of practice because as social workers, we are charged with organizational change as needed and what better way to try to make organizational change than to write grant proposals in order to find resources that will benefit our clients. So the outline for that is in the syllabus. So I implore you to take a look at that and also to download the course schedule for each week. This is a 14 week class, so each week except for one there are requirements for that week in terms of the readings so please go through those readings the first is understanding organizations policy and program the social workers role the second week is what do organizations do and and the auspice and legal aspects of organizations week three is how they work week four is organizational management Week five is looking at goals, goal attainment, and strategic planning. Week six is coming up with funding. Week seven is program development needs assessment. Week eight is the week that there is no specific um, assignment. Week nine, let me go back up, is organizational management. Week 10 is program development, program components, program characteristics, and budgeting. Week 11 is program evaluation. 12 is leadership and organizational change. 13 is trauma-informed organizational approaches. And week 14 is the end of class and class participation. So that's the syllabus. I encourage you to download a copy of that syllabus and put dates next to when things are due so that you can keep up with uh, the requirements for the course. In terms of the learning materials for this week, they are all outside readings. So please click on the links so that you can take a look at those outside readings. We're going to go over a few of the concepts in those readings in a few minutes. And there are two slide presentations, which we will also go over in a few minutes. There is a discussion post due this week. So in this course, there will be a lot of time spent considering the context, both physical and otherwise, in which we practice social work and the role we play within those contexts. The course assignments will require you to identify an organization or agency for assessment, program development, and grant writing. So if you have had a field placement or you're in a field placement, it would be good to use that organization. Hopefully you'll be able to come up with an organization that you can um, use in terms of the major assignments for this class. So the initial post is as follows. The name and location of an organization or agency, a brief four to six description of that organization and a brief description of your role within that organization and then there will be a response so you're going to respond to your assigned partners organization those assignments will be made shortly and you can use a variety of ways to respond in terms of that organization you can use media clips you can document official evidence of an online presence of the organization like going to their website or news stories so your response in this form is two to three paragraphs finding out or summarizing what you have found out about your partner's organization what kind of evidence of an online presence did you find what type of organization agency is this 
Would its administrators be pleased with its online presence? Does it seem like the kind of organization that you would want to send someone to visit or go there yourself? And given what the organization agency does, do you think its online presence is a good fit? So in addition to what you've written, upload at least three pieces of evidence to your response. So the discussion forum will allow you to attach materials, post photos, screenshots, or anything that you can find about this organization. And again, you will have assignments shortly in terms of the organization to respond to. So that is the assignments for this week, just the one discussion post. So let's go over the short PowerPoint I prepared, which just talks a little bit about some of the concepts in the readings for this week. So the overview of the readings talk about social workers as leaders, social workers as change agents, and social workers as policy makers. Social workers should envision themselves as leaders. I would ask each of you, do you consider yourself a leader? And if you can't raise your hand and say that you consider yourself a leader, I would hope by the end of this class that you would identify as such because we need to be the individuals who make change on behalf of the clients that we are called to serve. Social workers are in the best position to identify where change is needed and advocate for that change because we see firsthand when policies do not work, we see when services are inadequate, and it's not good enough for us to just say, oh, well, it doesn't exist or it's, it's flawed. We are the individuals who speak for those whose voices are characteristically silenced. In terms of social workers as change agents, we are vital members of an organization. We are trained to work effectively at all levels of practice with individuals, families, small groups, communities, and organizations. And we, again, see firsthand when policy services are ineffective and can identify where change is needed. Social workers can help mediate existing policy. Social workers can provide information for policymakers because where do policymakers, people in government get their information? They hopefully get it from knowledgeable people who can speak to the problem. So one way to make social change is to be willing to provide information to policymakers and be seen as a vital resource. Social workers can help set policy where there is none. I thought I'd also provide a couple of names of African-American social workers who were prominent in the field because one of the articles provides information about some of the radical social workers in North American history, but it does not give us any of the name of the promise, prominent African Americans or other diverse social workers for that matter. So Mary Church Terrell, Dorothy Height, and Thyra Edwards, and I would invite you to, finding out, to find out information about all three of these women. Next, what I'd like to do is go over the two PowerPoints put together by Dr. Stephen Kaufman. And so with PowerPoint one, we're going to begin an understanding of the organization, definition, overview, and discussion of the organizational auspice. So what are organizations? They are basically defined as a group of people intentionally organized to accomplish an overall common goal or set of goals. They are a collection of people who work together to achieve a purpose that all members share. 
So before you go on to the next few slides, ask yourself, why organizations? What do they do for us? So why organizations? First answer is look at groups of which organizations are a subset. That gives us a clue. A group is the largest set of two or more individuals who are jointly characterized by a network of relevant communications, a shared sense of collective identity, and one or more shared goal dispositions with associative normative strengths. What do they do for us? They accomplish tax, task, they connect us, they provide emotional support, social validation, and physical factors like helping us meet needs. But most importantly, you need to understand a simple idea, and that is it is easier to accomplish almost any task with the resources of numbers. So the more numbers, the more you can accomplish a task versus being by yourself. And from a social work perspective, think of organizations as the mediating systems between a person and fulfillment of a need. Organizations help to achieve a variety of needs that our clients are having difficulty with. There are formal organizations like a bank, a church, a homeless center, and then informal ones like, this is an interesting example, your neighborhood loan shark, a group of mediators who get together after work, or a few friends that hand out sandwiches to hungry people. What are some of the components? Informational, legal, it's auspice mission goals, rules and policies, bylaws and strategic plans, structure, which is the parts, processes, communication, information and authority, and the organizational environment. Let's go to the legal. The auspice is the legal basis for the organization. Organizations should have a vision. Not all of them articulate their vision very well, but this is the organizational's organization's worldview, what it hopes to do, the mission, which is its purpose, the goals, the com components of the mission, and how does your organization carry out that mission, and then the rules and policies. The origins of the organization, which is, again, the auspice, a way to classify that organization. Is it governmental? Is it for-profit? Or is it non-profit, not for-profit? So if it's a governmental organization, it's created by legislative or executive action. There is a federal, state, and a local basis. Some examples. Cabinets, departments, agencies, quasi-government agencies, and here is a link for a list of those type of organizations. Cabinet positions, and then you have the nonprofit versus for-profit. These are private sector, non-governmental organization. But there is a distinction. Both of them can make a profit, but it's what you do with the profit. For a nonprofit, it goes back into the organization's mission and um, services. For a for profit, it can be distributed to its shareholders. So, a for profit, the goals are generally to make profit. Many types, um, but all have identifiable owners. Organizations have same rights as a person under the law, and main types under the IRS include sole proprietorships, one person owns, as corporations, which are partnerships and corporations. Again, a nonprofit, the distribution does 
the the profit can be made, but it doesn't go back to individual owners. It goes back to the public. So it shouldn't be commercially motivated. And again, it's the way you would not distribute profits to individuals. It's formed for the purpose of serving a public or mutual benefit other than the pursuit of profits. So here's a different definition of formal, private, nonprofit, self-governing, and voluntary. In that case, must have a public service mission, must be organized as a non-for-profit or charitable corporation, government structures have to preclude self-interest, must be exempt from paying taxes, and must possess a special legal status that stipulates gifts made to them are tax deductible. And here are some synonyms for nonprofit. Gives you the summary between the for-profit and nonprofit sector. And going to part two of that lecture, we're now going to look specifically at vision, mission, and bylaws. So I won't review organizations again or their components. Um, we talked about the auspice, the vision is the worldview, the mission, the goals, and the bylaws are the rules of the organization. So vision, the world that the organization seeks to create, it's not legally required, but again, it's helpful for an organization to know where it wants to see itself. The mission is a statement. It is a component of the legal identification of the organization and is commonly a component of the documents like the bylaws. It explains how the organization will achieve its vision. A vision is a mental um, picture of what the organization aspires to be and is presented both inside and outside of the organization. I won't go over the mission, but here's there's some examples of missions. So you will look at the mission of the organization that you're going to be working with for your major project. This is Widener's mission according to what it provided CSWE. The mission statement should be created at the beginning of the organization, but it can be modified. What goes into a mission? A foundation. It explains the organization's purpose and how it daily serves its client. It describes primary products and services, a distinctive competitive advantage, and an overall strategy for long-term success. And it reflects the agency's expected level of excellence. Mission statements are generally fairly short. So if somebody asks you the mission of an organization, you should be able to repeat it in very few sentences. What it's not, it's not detailed and it's not narrow. It may determine the competitive environment, how resources will be allocated and how many team members are needed. So if you were going to create a mission, you'd want to conduct a brainstorming session, which involved other people and to write down values, beliefs and goals. And then you'd prioritize each value, belief, and goal and write a draft. And after each draft, does this mission clearly depict what the organization values and believes? Does this mission portray the goals of the organization? And does the mission cause those involved with the organization to positively act? If we're going to communicate that mission, it should be in writing. It should be talked about all the time. It should explain the benefits. People should be enthusiastic about the mission and able to describe how specific activities achieve that mission. 
the goals. How is your organization going to carry out that mission? They are general and they focus on the major elements, not the minutia. So this is an example that says the goals of the MSW program. So vision, in terms of summary, it went too fast. Your vision of the organization, although it's not required, if an organization cannot articulate its vision, it may not be positioned, positioning itself to be very future oriented its mission, its goals, and its objectives. The goals are more broad-based, objectives are much more specific, and we'll be talking about them much more. And we went too fast again. Back to the bylaws. Organizations have these rules, and they talk about ownership, auspice, and who can make authority, uh, make decisions. They lay out the fundamental pr principles which govern an organization, and they establish the, the specific rules of guidance by which the organization is to function. Most organizations do have bylaws. And the strategic plan looks to the future of the organization, and that will be addressed in a future lecture. So for today, we have gone over the syllabus, talked about major assignments. We have looked at an overview of the readings for the week and a lecture by Dr. Kaufman, and also the requirement for the, the assignment for this week. Again, shortly you will get your partner, and that is who you will respond to about their organization, which means that everybody has to be timely and posting the information about your organization so your assigned partner can respond. If you have any questions, please email me using the inbox for the class, prefer preferably, or ndthomas at wider.edu for Outlook. And I look forward to reading your posts for this week. Thank you. Bye-bye.